So as we start another brand new day, we find ourselves back in Kawagoe's office going over some of the information we managed to gather from the previous day. And what I find interesting here is that even if you only go to one location, your girlfriend Ren will go to the other location and gather up any information you might have missed. Still, what's even more interesting is that, I guess while we were gone, Kawagoe managed to get an email from Oyama. And while the email itself was pretty short and seems to be trying to deter us from investigating the cursed game more, it does lead Ren to the strange assumption that somehow Mr. Oyama might still be alive. Though having played the first game we know that to pretty much be a really large impossibility. We're gonna leave that on the back burner for right now and maybe just try to ponder on why Oyama was so engrossed in the, the idea of this cursed game in the first place. Ren seems to think he might have had some ulterior personal motive for investigating the cursed game, though, well, we can probably guess that to be the fact that he wanted to probably stop the curse and not die, but she, think, she seems to think that he was having some darker motive. I don't, I don't really believe that. But what I, I do agree with in regards to Ren and both Kawagoe is that Oyama had this knack for becoming so engrossed in what he was studying that he would sometimes just completely ignore the human factor involved, namely the deaths that seemed to pop up in regards to the cursed game. Still, Kawagoe seems to think that Oyama is transmitting himself via the game, and Ren just seems to think that Kawagoe is alive, terrorizing us via the computer. But the only real way to figure out any of this is maybe to go to some of the, those locations that Oyama mentioned in his notes, namely a karaoke club and a hotel. Kawagoe seems to think that the karaoke club might be our best avenue for investigation this time around, especially considering... Well, a year ago, there were a number of unnatural deaths that occurred at this karaoke club. And he thinks that, with our special left eye, that we might be able to pick up on some of this residual psychic energy. Still, Ren, being the logical person, thinks that this is a little bit far-fetched and that the hotel might have some more concrete information to look into. And while her idea does seem more founded in reality, uh, I don't think that's where we're going to be going this time around. Instead, the first place I want to go to is the karaoke club. Then what should normally be a pretty busy area of leisure for the people of Japan is pretty empty. And pretty much immediately we do get an email from Kawagoe who led us here. And he has what I guess could be a pretty smart idea. Considering the number of mysterious deaths that happened here, we probably shouldn't be so forward with our questions, and... Well, we can probably use the cover of coming here to sing karaoke as a means to, to look around the place, so... I guess we should hit up the front desk here. But not before we get our first ghostly sighting of... someone. Still, we shouldn't just barge around in this place. Maybe there's somebody... No, there doesn't seem to be anybody at the front desk. Just a large assortment of maracas and tambourines. You can never have too many rhythm items whenever you're doing karaoke. And 
really, this is a pretty snazzy karaoke club. You have incredibly spacious rooms, number of different themes as we'll be heading through. Plenty of ghostly voices spouting out from the speakers. And you could probably tell from what was being said in the subtitles there, there's going to be a lot of the cursed game going on in this karaoke club. Still, even with the distortion on the TV, it seems like they had a pretty good selection of music here. Still really surprised, they're just... Doesn't seem to be anybody around. Maybe someone's trying to call into the room. Well, there has to be someone here. Now, even though that creaking door is usually pretty indicative of where we need to go, we, we do have a number of other karaoke rooms we could investigate. Mm, maybe this one. Actually, let's just... we should just follow that creaking door. Seems we've run into our first ghostly encounter. And that particular locker is really drawing my attention. We're we're going to ignore that particular locker. It's it's for the best. I'll I'll, I'll show it in the thread, but more importantly, in this locker here we do find a note. That mentions the name of Oyama. And outside of the oddity of him asking about radio waves and antennas, he seemed most interested in getting up to the roof for some reason. And I can only assume that's going to be our end destination for the karaoke club. But before we head up there, it does seem like we have a brand new game update waiting in the locker. And that brings us into another brand new RPG section. This one... with a very odd background distortion. It seems that the noise is keeping us from our sleep. And it seems to be a noise that is bothering the entire town. Which is quite sad considering, once we talk to this girl at the gate here, this city is supposed to be a city of beautiful music. But ever since that strange flower came to town, the... But beautiful music has just been completely interrupted. So we're, we're going to talk to that person in the log cabin later. For right now, we just, we're just stuck to talking to a few other people. Namely people that, much like ourselves, have been interrupted from their slumber due to these very noisy plants. We don't also see the mention there of a great scholar that was brought in to investigate the plants, but the scholar has seemingly up and disappeared. Hmm. 
But yeah, nothing too much to gain from this NPC in the kitchen, just the flowers have been very disrupted to life here. And the one other NPC we can talk to is over here in what I assume to be an instrument shop. It is pretty curious that these plants only seem to come out at night, but we can interact with the plant directly. Though that does seem to cause it to just keel over dead. But at least that means we can sleep now, so... That allows us to re-enter the real world. So yeah, let's continue on our journey up to the roof. Now, yet again, there are quite a number of doors in the karaoke club, but most of them are going to be blocked off to us. And I have been wanting to keep in most of the scare events, I suppose. Like in this case, it's pretty clear they want you to follow that ghostly figure into the door, but well, there, are, there are a number of other doors to investigate, so let's pick one at random. greeted by a very similar noise that we heard in the locker room, but yet again, it's a very good idea not to interact with those. Instead, we see here that we do have another game update to investigate. Seems yet again our slumber is being interrupted by that horrible, horrible plant noise. Guess we should probably figure out where the plants are and get rid of them. There's one. This time around, though, they are a little bit quicker on the draw and try to get away from us, but they do follow a set path. And as long as you don't try to follow directly behind them, you should be able to cut them off at the pass. Now the problem is, there is going to be one other flower to deal with, but before we can deal with it, we have to talk to a few NPCs in town. Yeah, the bard here has very sensitive ears and seems to be suffering more than most other people in town. gatekeeper seems to be getting more and more depressed the more she has to bring up the fact that this used to be a place of beautiful music. So the innkeeper brings up a very interesting fact in that the even though we did make that one plant wither, it seems that once you take care of one, another just seems to pop up in its place. Still, by talking to them, we did manage to trigger the next flower to appear. And even though you might think you could probably sneak up on it, it's not really the case. But this one just makes a quick circuit around the house here. And as we bring the silence back into town, that means we should be able to go back into the real world.
Still, I do find it a pretty interesting parallel between the RPG being a town of beautiful music and it getting interrupted by horrible screeching and the fact that we are in a karaoke club where many an amateur could be said to do the same. Still, with all the murders that we had heard about before, it was only a matter of time before we stumbled upon our first regret. And considering the size of these karaoke rooms, I don't really relish the idea of running into one here. We have a game update waiting on another TV. First, we have to manage to get past this regret, which is pretty easy, all in all. You just have to get on the other side of the tables here, and you should be fine to get by. Which leads us into another extremely noisy night in the city. This one, though... Well, the plants have decided to play a little bit of hide-and-seek with us. The good news is that being plants, they aren't especially good at the hiding part. And in fact, overall, it's mostly pretty easy to find them. Before we go find the final one, though, let's see if the woman in the kitchen has anything new to say. And she is very thankful for us taking care of the plant. But it is kind of understandable to feel some sympathy for the plant. I'm sure they're not actively doing this out of any kind of malice towards us. We find the final one in the back of the instrument shop, but before we take care of it, you do want to go ahead and pick up the cursed cartridge here in the corner. But with that, we do bring the silence once again. Which again, silence is another karaoke room. While normally I, I would be very interested in checking out the bathrooms, for, for right now, I just want to continue heading up to the roof. In fact, I want to head to the roof as quickly as possible. Because things are quickly getting worse and worse in the karaoke club. But I do think we are almost there. I'm still very much impressed by just the sheer size of this karaoke club. Most of the, most of the karaoke clubs I've been to in the U.S. have been at most a single bar. To think of one being four or five floors is just beyond belief. If you're wondering where the regret w might be in this very large room here... Well, it decided to take the elevator over the stairs.
those distorted sounds that we heard from the speakers before went from almost jovial to very macabre very quickly. But things seem to be all quiet in the city of beautiful music tonight. Actually, a pretty nice change. Though something else seems to be a bit off, not only with the general graphics of the area, but also with how the people of the town speak. Still, now that the bard has moved, we can investigate this red book. We get another flashback in the RPG, but it's really hard to not draw some assumption that maybe that does have some real-world connection between Ren, Yuto, and Davy. Still, it's hard to really believe that as some mirror of the real world, considering that I don't think we ever actually saw any, like, romantic ties between Yuto and Ren, but just be something that we missed out on all along. Still, it is nice to be able to talk to the townspeople and not have them be so overwhelmed by the cacophony of the plants. Still makes you wonder just where they all happen to go. Maybe it had something to do with that great scholar that this man in the mansion brought into town. Still, without the flowers to deal with, it makes you wonder just what our point is in the RPG right now. ran out of people to talk to, and who's that? That could easily be the great scholar that guy I had mentioned before. And he has gained his access into the basement, which is nice, but... Uh-oh. 
And before we could investigate that dark basement more, we have a... We have a much more pressing problem in that we have no visibility right now. And it sounds like there's a regret somewhere in this room, but we can't see it. As with most of the other karaoke rooms, there is a game update waiting. Yeah, the plant problem that had previously disappeared has now come back in horrible, horrible style. The plants have overrun the town, and... Yeah, at this point, they are killing the people of the town somehow or another. They seem to be driving the people here mad. Yeah, it could be that these plants are seeing some cursed song that is taking over the, the minds of the people and slowly killing them. see here that it could definitely have been due to the scholar. We need to save this woman in the kitchen. And then thankfully Davy has his brute strength to save her. And oddly enough, she did not seem to be affected by the cursed song for some reason. And in case you were wondering, could we possibly kill all these plants on our own? Well, no, they will just continue to infinitely spawn out of those distorted panels in the game. But yeah, I think where we are probably going to need to end up going is into that dark basement, but... Well, there is kind of a massive problem in that we have no means to see around down there. And as most of the people of the town are too mentally overwhelmed by the, the cursed song, it seems... Well, maybe the only person we can turn to is this unaffected woman in the kitchen. And the good news is, we were right. So, before we grab the torch, we might as well grab the piece of the faceless thing that we've been gathering throughout the game. And here we can find the torch we were looking for. And as you can tell, the the basement isn't really dangerous by any measure. It's pretty easy curse cartridge to get down here, but as far as I can tell, the plants will never hurt you or stop you. But that means we can now continue after that odd scholar that seems to have brought these cursed flowers into town. We get an especially nice graphic effect, clearing up the darkness in the room, but... That also opens up a very odd door over here. I'm not sure why they would want to cover up this area, but... Yeah, amongst all the graffiti on the wall, there is a pretty easily missed set of red handprints. You know what that means, it's time for another cursed platforming section. 
Now, as you can probably assume, as we progress further into the game, these platforming sections will get a little bit more difficult, though that's mostly due to the really bad controls for the platforming sections, but as far as I can tell, you have a pretty unlimited set of lives, so you can probably fail as many times as you want to. But as to why they would want to keep this passageway a secret, well... I can only assume that it's because it leads up to the roof, finally. You don't just want any random person up there. I mean, it seems pretty easy for someone to just come up here and slip and fall to their death. is probably the least of our concerns, but it is probably good to be a little bit cautious out here on the, the edge. Though you don't want to be too cautious as we are now in a dire chase with the regret. I, uh, honestly, the regret is so slow that it's not really that much of an issue, but I, I, maybe you could fall off the edge. I decided not to investigate that avenue just because we were we're so close to our goal here. And yeah, as we finally hit the very tip top of the roof, we hear some very familiar music. If we investigate the TS here, we see that it has an interesting and familiar name on it. Let's go ahead and play the game on it. Because it does bring us into a very unique area. I, I hazard to call it a maze, but it does have a few dead ends here and there. Though there's really no punishment for running into a dead end. It's just, you know, a little bit of a, a simple forest maze. But as we reach the end, we happen into a very large house where we run into that aforementioned scholar. Before we talk to him, though, there is a chest you can try to open up, but it's locked. And there is a cursed cartridge you can go ahead and pick up. Which you want to make sure and pick up before you talk to the scholar, because... Well, we're not going to be able to linger after we talk to him. But yeah, the scholar is not very... clear with what he might be talking about. And before we can get too much information from him, well, he asks us to bring him with us and put him into the TS, which we do want to do. And we especially... I don't really show it off here just because it's it can kind of catch up on you, but there is kind of an encroaching darkness if you wait for too long in this area. But yeah, after bringing the scholar from his own game into ours, we do get a brand new icon on our TS screen, which is this little house. Let's go ahead and see what that does.